Welcome back to another exciting edition of The Coaches Show. I'm Curtis Ford. And I'm Denarvis Turner. And Denarvis, uh, the Southern University Jaguars came into town. Yeah. Pretty exciting game, 28-21 Jaguars, no loss for the Delta Devils. But you got to like what you saw out of the defense the first half. Michael Boykins, talk, talk about his, his incredible reads on the field. Well, um, Michael Boykins showed me shades of Champ Bailey, and, and it's like he had his own island out there. He called, he called him the real Revis. <laughs> but um, he just, he made, just made some spectacular plays out there. Uh, read the quarterback and just intercepted the football, took one back to the house, pick a load and pick six. It was, it, was, it was a sweet play. You know, at, you know the, first, the first quarter, offense, both offenses, offenses were really feeling each other out. Yeah. They, nothing, nobody was taking risks, no one was taking chances. Southern, Southern ends up going up by a touchdown, 7 nothing in the first. And then we get the defense comes back, comes back yes. to life. And Boykins takes one to the house and instantly ties the game right up. As soon as that play happened, I knew it was going to be a game. Good game. It was, it was a dog fight out there. Um, just, just an all around, just defensive, uh, defensive period. Defense was great. Uh, a couple fourth and inches play. Fourth and inches, Southern has the ball. Everybody knows they try to run the ball, and we stuffed them. Valley stuffed them two times. So that's, that was a big lift for, um, for Valley's defense. Uh, defensive line played good, fired off the ball. Just, just an all around great coaching and playing by uh, NVSU's football team and coaching staff. It was almost like, yeah, every week we always talk about we talk about Lapoy Franklin, uh, Fritz. Those guys really bring to life, but it was almost like Boykins' play really, really set the tone early for the Devils out there. And uh, you, you got to be excited to see that, yeah. to see uh, that our, our cornerbacks just really get after the football out there. Yep, it's like, it's like they watched the show last week when I talked about how the defense of, like, everybody's, everybody is literally destroying our, our, um, our defensive backfield. Mm -hmm. But this game, it's like they stepped it up. They practiced hard all week, and they came out ready, focused, ready to play football. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they did. We saw guys out there like Armand Williams uh, just laying on the hits out there. Just making, yeah. ta making plays. McFadden was out there also hitting people. It was a very exciting yep. game. If, if, you got to the, if, if they had a chance to get to the secondary, someone, you were going down. <laughs> you were going down and getting hit hard out exactly. there. Exactly. It, it was like Southern, Southern came out with a run first, a run first, um, Run first game plan. Game yeah. plan. Um, came out there, run, 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 run. Uh, they quarterback, they quarterback um, Dre Joseph. Mm -hmm. He only threw the ball ten times, mm -hmm. and he played the first half only. Mm -hmm. Came out there, um, they run it back. Sylvester Nowinski, 30, 30 rushes, thirty rushes. Really trying as to a, as a college player, thirty rushes is a lot of carries. He toted it all game long. <laughs> Second half, Southern came out there, and it was like a whole nother, um, whole nother team. Came out there just airing it out. Um, J.P. Douglas, 16 for 25, 223 yards with a touchdown. Longest touchdown was 58 yards. It seemed like I knew what they was going to run. Mm -hmm. I was on the, out there on the sideline. I was like, oh, they about to pass it right now. Mm -hmm. They about to pass it. And then when they got in the center, they finna run. It was like I knew. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand how the coaching staff couldn't adjust to that. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was something. It was, it was a crazy, it was a crazy effort from the from the running back for for the Jaguars. Yes. And I really thought at one point in time, it, if they kept going at that pace, we'll give him the football, that he was gonna break down. Yeah. Because I mean, like you said, he just ran the ball. Yeah. The whole first half. The whole, the whole first half. You, all, all, like every down, every down. I don't, I don't care if you're in the NFL you know, college, high school, whatever. If you're running back and you're just constantly getting hit, because our defense was laying it on him. <laughs> laying on yeah, it. If they, you're going to break down at some point. That's where I think Southern's coaches, I think they noticed that. I think that's why they brought in uh, Douglas yeah. out there. Because Douglas came in and he was really just airing the ball out and really making, just making things happen out there. Um, at the beginning of the game, our coaching staff came up with the game plan to put, put seven or eight in the box. Mm -hmm. And usually when you put seven or eight in the box, you're trying to stop the run. Mm -hmm. um, 101 yards gained by their running back. Uh, 30 carries, that's about three, three yards a carry. Yeah. I mean, it's decent, but when you put seven or eight guys in the box, something that's got to change because the run game is basically shut down. Mm -hmm. So 
changed by Southern's coach, came in, put the freshman quarterback in, and the freshman did his thing. He showed everybody a freshman can come in and play. Now, I, you know, talking with talking with some fans in the on the other side, people were people have been rooting for Douglas all season yeah. long. They really they really like the guy. I, you know, what what we saw from him, great poise. He kind of has a feel. He's a feel for the game, yeah. even though he is a freshman. Yeah. The game is usually you get you put a freshman in there. The game may be a little more. It may be over his head. Yeah. But not Douglas. Douglas really kept a calm calm mind. Made nice reads out there. Really just kind of facilitated the offense, and then, you know, he gets uh, gets one big play, and boom, you know what I'm saying, 58-yard touchdown. Well, um, we had an interview with quarterback J.P. Douglas after the game, and he talked about what the defense showed him during the course of the football game. Straight to the highlights, Narvis. You know, J Jaguars didn't do it all. Valley has some great moments. Yep. Let's check out the tape, D. Let's see Pittman handed off right here. Nice. nice little run up the middle right there. Nice little game. Gain about at six yards. Nice little run by Batiste. Yep. Taking it to the outside right here. Get you know, off me. Get off me. You know, the, 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 the running back tandem really was moving all day. Here we go. A miscue. I don't, you got to catch the football right there. If the, if the football hits your hands, I was always taught, if the ball hits your hands, you're supposed to catch it. It's like it was It was right there. Pimmett just threw a nice pass. But let's let's take a look at it one more time. Could have been a touchdown. Look, it could have been a touchdown. That's wide that had open, a potential right wide there. Wide open grass, number green grass for them, and it was just a keep and stay. You know, Pimmett goes down the stats for three interceptions, but when you have drop passes like that, you know, it's, it's really it's, Can't a, it's, a, about it. it's a tough game. It's frustrating that time. Right here. Hit a little quarterback keeper. keeper. I think Pittman. I think Pittman has to hold that ball a little longer, mm -hmm. draw the defense in a little bit before he pulls it. He can't probably could have gained a couple more yards. You gotta like his. You gotta like his spunk. You know, to the outside. Nice. He's really moving. He's a nice little mobile quarterback, but he has to make better decisions on the football field. Nice little dump off pass right here. I like that play. Draw the defense in mm -hmm. on the screen pass and just dump it off on the middle. But, but right there, you just hold on to the football. It's mis it's mistakes like these that are costing us the game. You gotta you gotta hold on to it. You gotta hold on when you know you're gonna take some contact. You gotta you're secure the, the football. You're a Division One football player. We shouldn't With be that having. Job, you have to hold on to the football. These Period. last couple of games, the ball is just coming out left and right. There is my boy. Pick 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 <laughs> pick that load in. <laughs> pick six right there. It, it, it was pretty. It was pretty. That was a great play. That really kind of inspired. It. After you have a fumble like that to the house. And then we get an interception like that. That is great right there. Boy, he, look at that. He just read, he read the wide receiver. He read the quarterback's eyes perfect. Just, just, that was the best play. Best play of the defense all day. Oh, yeah. By far. By far. Boykins had himself a game, adding on another one. And he should have had one more. He should have had three picks, but one of them got called back on the penalty. So, great, great all-around football game by Michael Boykins. Yeah, you know, there goes my boy Sanchez right there. That's your X-Factor. Right, right through the uprights. <laughs> And that one right there, first half, beautiful pass in the end zone. Great, great football play right there. It was, it was like they just knew it was, they knew it was going to be six. Just break down defensive backfield, and after that, it was over. Here we go. This, this, is, a, this is a great play right here. Nice pit, nice beautiful fake pitch. Fake. Beautiful play. Wide beautiful open, fake. just untouched. Go in the end zone, hand it to the referee, and give me six. That was a, that was a beautiful play right there. See, we got a tight, we got a tight ball game, 14-14. This guy really just, they really flushed him out of the pocket, but can make just, anything happen. Off of the line, too, like they just showed that they're too strong for our, uh, too strong to the defensive line. Yeah, 20, 2014, almost the end of half, and that's about it. Tough ball, close, go, uh, close ball game. Close ball game at halftime. The guys are really battling out there. Well, they play hard. Like, that's the hardest they play the first half. Mm. Now, as I said in previous shows, 
they have been a first half team unanimously, a first half team. That half was probably better than all the other halves they have played. Mm -hmm. Uh, defense played well, offense played well, except for a couple miscues. Mm -hmm. But clean a couple miscues up, and the ball game, ball game will be won. I think the first half, you know, I think we came out a little bit, a little bit nervous, a little bit jumpy. I don't know what it was. Southern had a big crowd, you know, they really brought it in there. But uh, you know, we really, we're really gonna see in this next half of the show. The second half came out, and everyone was pretty, pretty way, way more calm. Everyone was relaxed yep. and. Uh, Everything was just running smoother out yeah. there. Well, uh, that's it for the first half, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back after the break. We'll get into the second half stats. It's the 2012 Honda Battle of the Bands, and the Mean Green Marching Machine needs your help. Fans can vote online at okay. www.hondabattleofthebands.com and vote for NVSU on the SWAT category. Vote now to October 12th to see NVSU hit the field on January 28, 2012 at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. It's time for Ask Essie, where students at the Valley get the best answers and advice for their career questions. Why are cover letters important? Why is professional dress important? Why should I prepare for an interview? Where should I start my job search? Come to Career Services, where your questions about graduation clearance, jobs, and careers are answered. Ask your questions now via email at careerservices at nvsu.edu, Facebook at Valley State CSC, or on Twitter at NVSU CSC. Langston Hughes once asked an interesting question. What happens to a deferred dream? Well, here at Mississippi Valley State University, we answer. Deferred dreams can be realized. Have you ever wanted to return to college and complete your undergraduate degree? Will obtaining your undergraduate degree increase your chances for a promotion at your job? Well, now you can meet both those goals with MVSU Renaissance Learning Program. This program gives those who may have started their degree some time ago the opportunity to come back and complete their undergraduate degree in organizational management in as little as 18 months. If you think you are this person, simply give us a call at 662-897-1550 for further information. At Mississippi Valley State University, we believe that deferred dreams can be realized. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second half to Narvis, uh, Pittman <coughs> really settles down out there. Yeah. Really settles down. Really, the offense was really clicking in that second half. The third quarter, they were moving the football. Uh, Batiste, uh, Stanzel, power, power games back there. They really kind of bolstered, <laughs> bolstered the team, put the team on their backs once again. Um, second half for the uh, MVSU offense, everything went well. Only problem I have with that, Paul Cox did not have enough touches. Mm. Um, Paul Cox had one reception for 11 yards at halftime. That that stat right there tells me that they wasn't looking his way. I mean, he's your playmaker. Mm. He's arguably the best player on the team. Mm. And he, he needs more touches. Um, I can remember one play, um, he ISO man to man, and Pittman comes out, three-step drop, and he throws a fade pass. Paul Cox misses it. However, that was a great play. Mm. That, like, that's what they should have been doing all game long. Mm. He's out there by himself, him and the cornerback. Let him make a play. 
because he's been making plays this whole season for you. But other than that, uh, like you said, uh, Batiste and Stanzel, just a great, that's a great running back duo right there. Uh, power back, speed back, good vision for both quarterbacks, and also great endurance for both quarterbacks, mm -hmm. well, running back, excuse me. You know if you get the ball back, like you run it on first down, you run it on second down, you probably get tired, but those running backs are so well conditioned that they can keep going 100% every play. You know, like I like to highlight on what you said about Paul Cox. I feel as though Paul Cox is a receiver, you got to you got to get to him early in the game. You got to give the guy a couple touches, let him get a feel for what's mm -hmm. going on, and then that's going to open up a lot more things for you later in the ball game. Like um, against Alcorn, they're giving him the ball, you know, just a little like little uh, screens, something like that, maybe a couple slants. And then what happens? You throw a fade pass in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. NFL catch, too. Both feet inbounds. But uh, let's, let's get back into these highlights, D. Let's look at the second half right here. Here we go. Coming back. Another, another handoff. But for a loss right there. For a loss. Defense got back to the backfield and just absolutely creamed the running back. Mm -hmm. Drop pass. Drop pass. You cannot have drop passes as a Division I wide receiver. Catch the football. And this is Douglas in the game now. And this guy really... Smart player back there. J.P. Douglas just sit back in the pocket, throws the football smooth. He he probably had I think he all, he probably had a better performance than um, Alcorn's quarterback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brandon Bridge. Yeah. I'm gonna look at Pittman back in the shotgun. Quarterback keeper. Yeah, yeah I like I like Pittman's he, footwork. He's, a, he's out there. a great mobile quarterback. All all I'm saying is he needs to learn how to throw the football with more accuracy. And, and be more consistent back yeah. here in the pocket. We're going to break off a big run right, right here. Nice, great run. Big run right here. Just ran out of gas. Uh, cornerback came back and get him, but it's okay. Back on the line. Yeah. Down by down by one right here. Down this, 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 was a big, this was a big drive and also a big, it was a big defensive drive for Mississippi Valley State. Uh, they stopping right here. They got a chance to go back down the football field and win the game. However, hey. They didn't touch down for Southern. Now, this is really what impressed me. The game is on, is near the end, and we're just going to hand it to our running back, and we're going to let them go to work, DeMarvis. And These guys carried the team. Stanzo and Batiste, you usually don't run the football in the fourth quarter. Stanzo and Batiste got the football and put the team on their backs and said, we will get this ball into the end zone. And you know, I like, I like what I heard. Because Batiste was just like, you know, just get it, just get it downfield, just get the ball back to us. And he was like, I'm gonna do this. Yes. I'm gonna do that. I know Stan was thinking the same thing. See right here, I mean this is a great, this is a great drive. Get first down, first down, the first down. Yeah, we got a little lucky right there though. Almost through interception. This is a nice play right here though. Nice, it's gonna nice keep catch. us in the middle of the field. Paul Cox. Give him the football, he will catch it. You know the last, the end at the end, the last play. Oh, I know this is, I know this is something a burning, oh, a burning topic for you. Let me, let me get right. We're gonna go 